All right, this is part three. Hopefully you can see it. And like I said, I apologize for my crappy choreography. I do not know how to use cameras. Uh, me and my son talked about getting a, a GoPro. I don't know, maybe I'd mount that on top of my Kevlar or my repelling helmet, and I could make better sense. Uh, got my faithful assistant, Gunner, here, uh, who's going to make sure he's not going to get in the way, right? All uh, right. Yeah, he sure he is. Okay, so this is part three ammunition, okay? Magazines, all that stuff. You know, mag pulls are all great and everything. A lot of people have been saying they've been having problems with magazines. A lot of times it's because your magazine well is just dry, you know, hard to fit in freaking uh, ammo pouches on your on your vest. So they're like, oh, this magazine sucks. And I've got friends who are like, hey, man, you got any steel magazine? I'm like, yeah, I got steel magazines. I got a lot of magazines, okay? Well, let me get some of those steels from you. I'm like, fucking go get your own, dude. Shit costs money. I I got this stuff fair and square in uh, in uh, my previous employment. Okay, now I bought most of mine, a lot of good ones. Metal will probably always be the best, as long as you take care of them. Uh, a lot of good plat. I've got all sorts of different magazines. I've only got one magazine that I bought from one company, and they would freaking get stuck. And I even tried to contact. They're like, "Oh, you're using two two three in in these." And I'm like, "The fuck are you talking about?" You know. All right, so here I'm going to talk to you about basic ammunition, okay? All right, people get confused about that too. Oh, what kind of ammo should I use? All right, I use, uh, I basically, what I do is I either go to cheaperandirt.com. Uh, there's an American Ammo or something like that, but they're always out of stock. But cheaperandirt.com and sportsmanguide.com always have good sales. You get on their email flyer, you get his notice, hey, you want to get some 556 five, from you know, American, whatever, or, you know, and it's at this, you know, bulk rate at a really low price. Uh, usually I buy four different brands. I get them from those, uh, they like said cheaper and dirt.com and sportsman.com are my go-to places. And I'll shoot PMC, which is from South Korea. Uh, the different, you know, X tack on my 62 grain, and I'll shoot bronze on my uh, 55 grain. I'll also get, I've been using here for the last, I don't know, year or so, Gecko, G-E-C-O. Uh, it's kind of, you look at it and it might look like it's a cheap Russian whatever. But Gecko is the Swiss company that makes the ammunition, NATO standard ammunition for the Swiss military, law enforcement. And they have every caliber, you know, 38, 9 mil, you name it, they got it, Okay. But the important thing we're going to talk about here on your AR-15, M16, A1, A2, A4, carbines of all different A1, A2, A4, whatever, okay? Uh, people are like, oh, well, you can, you know, this will shoot that. And you know, the smart bet to do is just stick with your barrel as a design. The original M16s were like one in... 11 or 12 twist. I can't even remember. It's been so long since I've been to armor school. Like, I went to armor school in 1995, okay? So, but these are not original. They're M16A1 reproduction barrels from Brownells, and they're in 1 and 9 twist, okay? I generally go 1 and 9 twist, which is basically what they made for the A2s, okay? The ones that didn't have the green tips on them, Okay. Uh, my M, my Colt M4 carbine is a 62 grain, and I have another in, uh, A4 uh, rifle that's in 62 grain. Okay, and the 62 grain, the M, that M4 Colt M4 carbine and that A4 rifle are, they have a one and seven twist. Most of you guys are buying the brand new, new carbines and rifles these days. You know, especially the really fancy ones. You're going to have one and seven twist, all right? Easiest way to do it is on pretty much on most, all of them, they'll be where you can read them. Let me see if I can find the dang thing. I have glasses, by the way. A1. I can't see it. That one, I'll, I think, is back here. But it's a, it's a one and nine twist. Just trying to find one to prove my point, you guys, so I don't look like a freaking jackass because I didn't do this ahead of time. This one is also back here, okay? Come on, you. Don't make me... I'm not tearing something apart. Maybe I'll have to take some of the handguards apart to find the 
the stamp. Ugh. But I know some of them got the marking on the barrel up front. Bastard. Is that one? Yeah! Here we go. Here's an example. God, I hope you, I hope you guys can see this. Because I am terrible with cameras. If I remember right, that says... DPMS 5.561-9. Okay, this is a DPMS barrel. Okay, it's a NATO standard 5.56. Uh, uh, 55, uh, 1 and 9 twist barrel. Okay, which most of these are. Okay, and I'll explain why I go mainly with 1 and 9 twist. Because there's going to be a lot of these super, you know trigger pullers okay they're gonna be like rah, what do you, do? Rah, you know on these ex-marine cooks and stuff one nine twist okay uh this a4 is also this one a4 is a one and nine twist but you see they're not not always showing some of them are some of them aren't some of them you take the hand guards off you take the hand guard off and the stamp will be up in here okay and that goes with a lot of my a lot of my rifles because especially you get these ones that have the contour there's one da, da, da. all right uh, yep, 5.56 NATO 1 and 9 twist. Okay, that's my Bushmaster. Uh, this is my Mag SPR, basically A2 long barrel. And man, I'll, I would have to take the barrel, the uh, drop in hand guards off of that. And that is a pain in the ass. But I'm going to show, I'm just going to assure you that it's a 1 and 9 twist. Okay. Uh, same thing with my pistol. I went 1 and 9 twist, 10 and a half inch, 1 and 9 twist. All right, there's going to be a lot of people that are going to be like, you know, why would you do one and nine twist? You get the new ammunition is, you know. Well, here's the deal, okay? When the Obama administration came in, you know, when I was first starting to build, you know, my rifles after I'd retired, and they were like, oh, we're going to grab all the guns, you know, all the crap. You guys know the history of what's been going on the last eight years, okay? Well, when they couldn't do that, and then they decided they're going to go after the, the green tip ammunition, okay? Oh, it's armor piercing. They get a couple, of, they prop up a couple of people, you know, because there's a lot of anti-gun, anti-Air-15, you know, law enforcement, military, you know, politicians. That, you know, oh, these this machine gun, it shoots through tanks. Oh, you know, oh my God. Okay, the green tip does have a steel flechette in it, okay? It's made that way. It's, it was made for the military so they could uh, pierce through, like, you know, like a lot of M16, you'd hit freaking leaves in a, in a tree limb and it would freaking deflect or hit a person. Actually, they're better off with a green tip because it goes straight through. I'm going to tell you this from experience. It goes straight through. Whereas the the uh, the old uh, round that they had for the M16 A2 and even back further for the A1, whatever, 1 and 12 twist, whatever that was, uh, 55 and all that stuff that sucker would squirrel through a dude's gut and squirrel through half his body before it go out his right ear you know and it was crazy uh so actually they're better off you're better off getting shot with a green tip all right has that set yeah i can't go into body armor uh but it's actually pretty weak round compared to a, an ak round but you know it's a pretty good round it's a straight shooter okay the simple basics we're talking one and nine twist and one and seven twist one and nine twist 55 grain one and seven twist a lot of the newer newer stuff that you guys are going to get okay 62 grain the green tip okay it's important for you guys to know that now you can shoot uh you know 55 or 62 in the opposite some of them like you'll shoot a 55 grain out of out of some company's uh one and seven twist and the round will actually either go outside come out sideways or the round will separate as it gets down range and it'll get, fragment going to pieces you know squirrel all over the place i can't remember what the they call that then you know uh shooting 62 they say you know it's too powerful around it's uh too powerful around for the one and uh, nine twist especially an older rifle because uh, it'll over gas and cause you issues. You know, some guys say, oh, it'll blow up your gas. It may. I don't know. I've never seen one out of all the time. I've seen uh, 
saws blow up on the range and stuff like that. I've seen guns get ruined by people overshooting them, overheating them. Uh, but I've never seen a gas tube blow up. I've seen guns malfunction probably because the gas tube was, was bad or ruptured. And then it just wouldn't function correctly after that. But you see, you know, just shoot what you got. And if you look at your barrel, like you bought the rifle through your box way, you can't find your instruction barrel. You look on the top of the barrel, you can't figure out, you're like, oh, I don't know what I got. It doesn't say it. Just pop your hand guards off. If you have a, you know, drop-in, This these are uh, two-piece drop-ins. Got Allen screw, Allen screw, Allen screw, Allen screw. You just undo those, pop it apart. More than likely, uh, your barrel marking identification will be uh, around this portion of it in the first two or three inches. That's where it's generally at. It's either right here on some of these smooth. So you see the smooth bore up there at the top. Then you get these bigger contours. So they start, you know, most of them are down here. Okay. Same thing with my pistol. It's down here. I remember seeing it. All right. But I shoot the 55 grain because... One, I was afraid that uh, the liberal Democrats were going to freaking stop us from getting 62 grain. So I just automatically switched straight back to 55, which I was more familiar with. I shot, that was what I shot in the military most all the time. It really doesn't make a difference as long as you have the right rifle. 55 grain is cheaper. Okay. Uh, they weren't going after that. They can't justify it. Okay. They failed in getting the 62 grain. They almost did it. And there was such a shortage, you know, a few years ago that it was tough to get 62. And when there's demand and there's shortage, what's going to happen? Prices are going to go up. So I stuck with 55 grain. Doesn't matter to me. I can hit freaking target. I'm not shooting at anything that, you know, I prefer if I was hunting to do use my 62 grain, but I hit the same thing when 300 meters as my 55 grain. And I'll do the same damage with either one. There might be some characteristics and all that stuff. I don't know all that crap. You know, I don't sit there and read AR15.com and join these M16 buddies, whatever. You know, if you need help, I'll help you. That's the way I am. Every time I go to the range, I've even had guys when the range was, they were so busy. They've asked, hey, can you help us out? I've seen guys that were talking about their military experience, talking to civilians. Tell them some effing retarded crap and complain. These guys are like shooting zero targets. We're like maxed on their sights and it's still, you know, nine inches too high, barely hitting the paper. And so I see them, I'm like, what are you doing, dude? And they're using like M4 for an A2. You know, so I go over there and say, hey, I hook them up with a target and say, hey, here's what you're doing. A lot of times they always get defensive. I say, hey, dude, I've made that mistake a lot of times. Okay. Uh, and they'll be shooting at like 10 yards. If you're shooting a pistol target, you know, a big-ass law enforcement pistol qualification target at like 10, 15 yards with your M16, yeah, that might be a guy that's a good way after you get it zeroed and you qualify, you get some good training. That's how you train your everybody, hey, reflex fire, fire, hit that target, okay? what You want a human's actual size of what a, you're going to see in a shooter, you know, combat situation, you want that target to be at that distance so you can shoot it and see how actually you are, okay? And you'll hit it. But what you want to do is say, you know, God forbid there's a zombie apocalypse and, you know, or the Iranians are coming over the hill, okay? You can shoot distances of 50 meters, you know, look at it as, you know, half a football field, to 300 meters, you know, more than three football fields. You should be able to take this M16 M4 pistol and be able to not only hit a close-up target, somebody running at you close-up where you're freaking out, running in your front door, bam, 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 okay? But also, that guy, you decided, hey, one got away, and I know I'm not going to go to jail, so he turned around, he's got a pistol, and he's like, hey, you, 300 meters, more than 300 football fields, and you put your rifle up to your shoulder, get a good sight picture, and squeeze the trigger, and you're going to hit him. You want to do that. See, Gunner knows. Okay, and you should be able to do that with all these. Okay, if you need help, ask one of your military friends that knows what the hell they're talking about. If someone tells you to use a hunting target, something that you would see like somebody shooting a twenty two or a BB gun with, and they're giving you advice on how to do mark shit and aim at the very bottom of it, and then you can't figure out why you're hitting a, a pistol target at like 50 yards, that shit just throws my brain off. Okay, so use these. All right, if you get confused, ask somebody that knows. Okay, I'm not saying I'm an expert. And if I can't tell you, what I'll do is I'll look it up in the FM or I'll ask my buddies. Okay, 
but I've worked on these ranges. I've taken, I've been placed in charge of ranges with like three to 500 people coming through uh, a week, you know, or less, you know, whole brigade qualifying at my range. So there it is. Need help? Ask me.